Hey everyone, it's Saturday the 28th of September and it's 12 o'clock lunchtime. And today we're going to start building the uh, mountain bike project that I started to dismantle in the previous video. So, as you can see, I have actually started reassembly after doing quite a quick paint job on it. Um, not the best paint job in the world, but it does look miles better than it did. That's basically what I was going for. I wasn't going for a top-notch paint job. Just a quick, easy project, pretty much. But it does look a lot better than it did. Um, I've got to be careful with those front forks because I haven't got any lacquer. So they haven't been lacquered. Um, just several coats of white paint. I didn't even primer them. I just put the white paint um, straight on top and it actually adhered pretty well, in fairness. Um, and despite being black, well actually they were purple before they were black, um, that did coat really well. Um, so yeah, it's not the best paint job in the world, but it will do for this particular project. And the only reason I've got the forks and the wheels back in it and the handlebars is just so I can set it up like that, because it'll make life a bit easier. Not pumped the tyres up yet, but they have got uh, replacement tyres on. I have now got a pair. I've had to replace the rim tapes on both wheels. And what I like to use, which is a good quick trick, is just some of this PVC electrical tape. Um, I've even seen this suggested a lot on the bicycle repair groups I'm on on Facebook. Um, some people said, you know, you just need to go around once, and that's fine. Some people say two or three times. I like to go around at least twice, uh, just to be sure. You can go around as many times as you like, though. And, of course, you can use whatever colour you like, because you're not going to see it when the tyre's on. Right. The only thing I haven't got, which I thought I did bring back from the workshop the other day, is a pair of handlebar grips. Uh, other than that, I do believe I have got everything I need on here. So, I'm going to stick to my original rules, which was not to buy any brand new parts. It all had to be used parts. So, I have actually gone ahead and refitted the bottom bracket, even though I said in the previous video I was going to just get new bearings. Once I cleaned them all up and whatnot, I could see they were just perfectly fine to reuse, so I did. I just re-greased them after cleaning them and just put it all back in. They went together perfectly fine. These are the gear shifters, brake lever combos I'm going to use. Shimano. Oh, just a Shimano one. Seven speed. They were on my Claude Butler hybrid, but I swapped them because I just wanted to make the Claude Butler look a lot better than it did instead of all tired and worn out because that's basically what these look like. They just look a bit weathered. <laughs> they still work. Still, um, you know, technically nothing wrong with them. They just look a bit warm. And I'm going to have to change the gear cable for this one. I'll show you why in a minute. I'm just going to slide this one on. I'm just going to sort of guess where they're going to have to go. So I don't think that's far off right there. If I do need to adjust them, I can undo them again. But yeah, unfortunately, this cable has got a bit frayed in more than one place. I mean, one of the things I could do if I really want to salvage the cable, because it does look in good condition apart from this, is just to unravel that cable, cut it back as close as I can, and then hopefully get it down the next... Uh, You know, down the um, bit of outer without catching the bit I snagged. That's the only risk of doing that. But I think, as I've got spare cables here, I might as well just change it. It's only a case of undoing one screw from the looks of it, because I think one's actually gone missing, which I've never noticed before. But yeah, there is a screw missing in there. You should have to just undo two screws. You take that off, you push the old cable out, you put the new one in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Slides on. Well, 
like so. I'm just going to do my guesstimate for the time being. I mean, I can still ride it. I can go for a test ride like this. I don't need the bar grips for that. But I have got some. I'm sure I put some in the bag last time I was over at Mum's and I bought some bits and bobs back. Type these hex keys up again. The stupid thing is, with this set of hex keys I've got in my hand, you need a hex key to tighten the damn things up. So you need a hex key to tighten up the hex key set. Bit of a design flaw there. They should have done it so you needed a screwdriver. Now, for my personal riding position, I do like my brake levers down just a little bit. I know some people will almost have them where they're bloody vertical. That's a bit uh, too much for me. Try and get them eyed up somewhere where they need to be. One thing I do like about this, you can sort of use it as a screwdriver, like that. Then you turn it at an angle and then you can use it as a proper hex. And I'm actually surprised at how strong this thing is. This is only something I got out of Lidl's quite some time ago, and I've put this through quite a lot of abuse and whatnot, and it still comes back for more. I've got more hexagon keys and I know what to do with. Let's see how many I've got in the bloody workshop. So, I think, I am actually missing the smallest one out of this. So you need a hex key to tighten up your hex keys. Because <laughs> this bit always comes loose. And it just gets annoying to uh, use these when they get loose, because then these just flap all over the place and get in the way. I might actually have that smaller one in the pile of tools I've got on the floor when I was collecting them up the other day. So, as quick as that, we have the gear shifters attached. Now, I've actually realised I've only got one of these. I've got plenty of these over at uh, the workshop. I'm not actually going to be over at Mum's until tomorrow. So I'm just thinking of just literally going as far as I can with this today and then finishing it up. Uh, I've got a few bits in the workshop. That's the, seat, the original seat post clamp. I've just changed the um, nut for a cat nut on it. one thing I do need to do. For a second there I'd lost it. Because I did this late at night I couldn't tighten up the um, lock ring. I don't think my neighbours would have appreciated that at like uh, 11 o'clock at night even though it was only a few taps on. I'm still not going to do that. Right, now I can get the seat in, now that I've got the clamp in, I'm going to set it roughly to where I need it for myself, which is somewhere there, and I've totally forgotten the size of that, I think it's a 14, yep, this is 16, 17 combo, where's my 14 gone, is it that one? Nope, that's a 12 and 13, so I found them either side. Ha! Found it. Now, usually 14s. Well, I think this one's actually a 13. That's a little bit, yeah, there's a 13 actually. It's making me look like a liar now, isn't it? <laughs> Usually they're 14s, but they can be 13s. They're going to be one or the other, either way. Right, that's one of the bits that I need to get out. So now we've done that, I can knock Lego models everywhere, apparently. 
you turn this upside down, um, I may have just disappeared off camera a little bit, I think, maybe. if it works. So I'm risking it out of the bin so it's back. It feels like it works. See, I just thought that's a nice compact one, but now I've got this upside down, I don't think this is going to reach. Is that even going to go on that? Yeah, it is. You are meant to put this on the floor and put your foot on that, but... Yeah, that's taken air pretty well. I don't know why this was thrown in the bin then. Cool, yeah. I thought we were going to be here ages doing it like this. That's actually... Um, Well, this has got um, things on it for both valve types, your Schrader and your Presta. Which is actually great because that design means you haven't got to bloody mess around with it, changing bits and whatnot. You just flip it straight on like that, whichever one you need. Which is actually pretty good for the bikes that I run because I run a number of them with both types of valves. Great if you're going on like a cycle ride or something, this pump would go right in your backpack. Or even a bicycle bag, something like that. And it actually pumps up your tires pretty dang quick. They should be good in a tube, so we're in the shed for weeks holding air. So, uh, yeah, I'm pretty confident that they'll be uh, good. I might have to just adjust that, I can feel a little bit of play in there. But sometimes you'll find your bearings will have to settle. So you can spin it around and find that you've got to just tighten that up a smidge. I've had times where I've had to do that like two or three times before they settle. Right. That's the right side. It goes in there like that. Going to reuse the original bolts. Hey, Snowy. How you doing, sweet cheeks? I'm cheating. <laughs> there you go. It's a bit close to that frame. Put the other, the other side on when I can find where I put it. That's not it from a different bike. Where do I put it? It's a black metal bar, I can't miss it. Well, actually, I could. <laughs> I've got that one, but that's for a different bike which is currently over uh, in the workshop because I'm trying to get the uh, bottom bracket off of that one and it doesn't want to play ball ah, there it is but remember to put that one opposite to that one you don't want to put them like that <laughs> if I 
I suppose you could if you want to make a clown bike, but I don't want to make a clown bike. I want to make a bike that I can actually use. There we go. I might have enough room to get in there with a, a wrench. How you son of a bitch! There's a little bit in there, so what I can do grab my screwdriver and wrench, um, hammer, loosen that off, and then hopefully tap that round a bit, a little bit more. bearings do end up going bad, at least I know it's going to be easy to get this off. Put the lock ring back. Is that job done? Right. I think rear derailleur mech and then I can get the chain back on. No. Both mechs and then the chain can go back on. So these are easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Especially this front one, I haven't got to guess where it's got to go. Because uh, I got smart, I actually left the mark in the frame where it was, I didn't paint it. So, all I've got to do is get this, and make sure I've got it up the correct way, of course. And that's where the mark is. I'm just going to get the bolt in. Literally, all I've got to do is just make sure it's nice and straight. In line with that mark, make sure it's nice and straight with the gears. Which it isn't because it was rubbing on the tyre. It's no good rubbing on the tyre, is it? I can't see the mark. There it is, right up there. Check it. Whew. It's actually pretty damn good. <laughs> we should make a ratcheting hex key. I know you can get the parts for your ratchet, but I mean an actual ratcheting hex key. Why well, I'm going to get told they do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to do some drainier adjustment. Oh, One thing I've also been doing is trying to get the overspray off of here. And somewhere down here, I actually did have some steel wool, and that's just disappeared. Ooh. Saying, oh, because I've got a little bit of a one of these rubber doobery things on here. Yeah, that cable's gonna have to be changed anyway. I've got the rubber bit on there. But don't bloody do. That'd be too far away. And where's that bolt that fell out of the dragon mech? There it is. I'll get that bolt back on. I'm not doing any cuts on this, by the way, I'm just going to do this all in real time. Just so you can get some idea of, uh, you know, how long it would take. Not long, in all honesty, if you've got all the parts like I have sitting here, it wouldn't take you long to put the bike together. You know, it's like a little notch on both of these that have got locked together. You've got to make sure you've got that in the right place. Crank it down, good and tight. 
Yeah. Almost forgotten that that's a, um, I can't remember what they call it, like an auto rise or something. Right. I'm going to have cat hair stuck to it now, but that'll soon um, flung off. Okie koki. Might slip the, uh, gets threaded through your front dralia neck. I always find it's easier to put the end with the pin in it through this end first. I mean, a lot of people don't reuse those pins. I do. I haven't like, had an issue with doing that. But I've just seen on the groups that some people say you shouldn't do that. Explain to me why you shouldn't do that then. Like I said, I've been doing it for years and never had a bloody problem. You should always use a master link. No, you don't always have to use a master link. You include master links with a brand new chain because it's easier. Now, how do you think these are put together from the factory without a master link? Because they just press the pins together. Because it'd be split like it is now. Uh, yeah, split like it is right now. I'm going to just use, probably use a tool or a machine to put it together fully. I don't know why my F's come out like that. It does my head in. I'll push that pin a little bit too far out. So I'm going to use the tool. Hopefully, drive it back in. I don't know if that's going to be enough. I pushed it too far because what I normally do is get that clip together like that, and there's enough of that pin still poking in that way to hook it together. But, uh, that's not going to work. And I don't know if I can get it to work. Yep, that's done it. So now, I've got that pin pushed back a little bit. I should be able to just go like that. And then the chain will hold together without it going bing. Your own little tool just to hold the chain together. But if you haven't got a tool, there is a way to do it, as I've just shown. And when I disassemble a, ch disassemble a chain like this, that's why I push the pin that way. So I can get the tool in easier and close it all up. Sometimes this bit gives you an issue. So much force on jam it together. Going. It's just a very tight fit.
Okay, so I haven't got to set the Brailler Max up. They are set up. A bit of a wobble in those tyres. Now the question is, will the pedals I select, I have selected, will they fit? Because you get different size threads. Remember, this one's the reverse thread, reverse to normal, this side. And it should be 15. Sometimes they're 16s, but... Yeah, these ones are 15. The ones I took off were um, 16s, I believe. I couldn't get the 15 on it. I think we're just about ready to put this back up on its wheels. That's on the way again. Nope, I was going the right way. Dang it! There's one. Where's the other one? There it is. And this is the one with the correct thread. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, this side. got to bolt onto this is the V-brakes. That's just a case of connecting up the cables and setting everything up. Oops. Just knock the water dish everywhere. My hex keys. Because I, uh, whenever I'm storing V brakes, I put a zip tie through just like that, otherwise, you lose the springs. And that is never fun. Now the other thing I'm going to do make life easier to bolt these on is just to turn the brake pad that way around. Because otherwise when you go to put them on like this, the brake pad will get in the way, they'll foul the forks. So. Just drop. for the spring pin to go into. I'm going for the middle. Have a minute. If I need to change it later, I can. Why 
I'm not going in there, you pain in the backside. Get on there. There we go. Okay, so I want the other two now. Two of those and two of those. Right, let's prep both of these, shall we? Oops. Smudges up on the window watching me. See if I'm on the middle one or not. Yeah. Okay, get these balled up, get the brake pads into place. Job done. Actually, go find some washers for these while when I'm at the workshop. Because that bolt is like rotating with the brake, and it's not supposed to do that, but it will do for the time being. Or it could be the V brake because that one's not doing it. Now what I like to use normally are the very long hex keys because they get over the tire then I can just sort of use it as a screwdriver like that. But this one sort of fails the tire sometimes. And that one's not doing it either, it's just that bloody one. sure my wheel is in there nice and straight, which it is. on that side but try and adjust that later when I've got all the cables and whatnot attached. Now let's just get these brake blocks into place. One. You'll often find that the brake blocks have a curve in them to go with the wheel. Be 
fairly great blocks one far open for this bike. Considering they've gone from a hybrid to a, a mountain bike in use. Ready to uh, get some cables threaded now. And luckily, with this particular bike, all the all the rear cables go along the top there, which I prefer. I don't like them running down there because they rust easier. Because obviously, all the water from the bike sits on the cables and it gets all the water spray from the roads. Yeah, I, I just don't like them down there. Pardon me. Right, now, I'm going to need a certain pair of wire cutters and I don't know where I've put them. There they are. These are one of two pairs that I own that I specifically use for this purpose. I've got a set here and a set over at the workshop. this bit that needing to be trimmed. Yep. Actually it might because it won't go I can't quite see. Right. Now, I'm not reusing this cable, so I'm snip that one. Let's put that down there for now. Let's see if I can get most of the rear threaded through, shall we? I'll also be able to tell if this one's long enough or if I am going to have to use the new one that I've got. Which I suppose I can do because technically I've not, it's new, but I haven't bought it specifically for this. I bought it for another project. Okay. It's got to go from there to here. Is that going to be long enough? more or less. <laughs> okay. I'm just going to try and straighten that out a little bit so it threads better. I don't think this bit's going to be any good. like the other end so I'm going to have to cut a bit. Hey. Not really what I want to do but I will. So we get another bit. We can use this as a little measure like so. It's got kink in the end here so the cable won't go through. I'm trying to find the bloody wire cuts that I had two seconds ago. I use them to go snippy snip on that rear. I'm just going to go just a smidge longer. Those. You can get proper cutters as well for these because sometimes 
Now you will close the end up, but if you have a good sharp pair like this, you shouldn't have a problem. Shouldn't have a problem. And even if it does get squashed, all I do is just stick like a very small flat-ended screwdriver in it, just to open the end up. That's the other issue you may come across as well. And that's the only pro that is the main problem with uh, using these sort of snips. Great for cables, not so much for the outers. Have I got anything small that I can just poke in the end of that? Small hex key might do it just to open the end up a little bit. Okay, so that doesn't want to play ball at all. Um, I'll try a bit from this then. Some of it cuts better than other bits. So we'll see if this bit's going to cut better. Oh yes, that's giving me a nice perfect... Oh, had my foot on the cable. Yes, I know there's no ferrules on the end of this, but in my experience, I've never found a difference. Okay, so that's the first section. Yeah, we've got yards of cable, actually. That's good. That's what I want, yards of cable. Right, now I only need... I suppose I should take that off, shouldn't I? get the other cable in. Preferably without losing the uh, one screw that's left. Okay, that's where I need it to be. And that just pokes through like that. You need it in first to get the cable in and out. That wouldn't slide so much if I had a handlebar grip on it. Let's see if I can steal this cable. <laughs> steal a steel cable. Do, do, do. Should be played long enough. It's good if I didn't want to reuse that, isn't it? Because there's no good now. That's an aspect face way put the cable in there, but it wasn't. Yeah, that was one of those types of grip shifts anyway. You wouldn't have been able to ever change the cable. I loathe. Why did I just throw that over there? I do things like that, and I have no idea why. I'm just going to just put the main lights on.
see if that'll uh, help. Mm. Not by much. There we go. Is that screwed all the way in? Yes. Now I'm not going to put the cover back on just yet. I'm going to try and find. the uh, wrong bit. Where did that long length I had? There it is. Okay. I don't think it really matters which way around you put the cables on here. Not really. Just your own preference. So I like to put the right hand gears on the right hand cable stop, your um, left gears in the middle and then the brake on the left side. That's just the way I like to do it. You can do it any way you like. It's still got to work regardless of what you do. Yep, we've got miles of cable to go down there so I just need two bits for in there. Now will this bit reach for the rear brake? It should. Yep, I could actually get away with just trimming the end off. one pre-cut down there for the front brake. So it's just the rear brake that I've got to worry about. And then just three little bits in there. And what I've got down here that I can use. It's got closed up ends on it. It's got closed up. What I need is one of my teeny tiny little screwdrivers really just to open those ends up. Right. I bet that's going to be too long, isn't it? A little bit. I'm going to trim that down a bit. That's getting annoying without doing that. Should I go through? No, I'm just going to get in the way of the seat if I do that, so... This has got feral on the end of it. So I can actually thread it through from one end. Like that. And that is the front gear cable ready to be connected. It's got to be connected on the uh, cable doohickey. There we go. Um, Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to turn that around to do the uh, to do the rear. If I can, we're knocking it or anything. Tires are still holding air, and that's good. That's good. Try and get that to lock in there. So now I need a bit to go from there to there. So what have I got laying around? I've got several bits laying around. Including a few bits that originally came off of this. Uh, what's this bit? I think all of these bits originally came off of it. Get 
trim. Hopefully the cable will go in. Pretty certain I've actually got plenty of cable here so I could trim it if I needed to. There we go, that's in, that's going through there nicely. I suppose if you wanted to, you could put a bit of grease or some thread white oil or something down it just to give it a little bit of a lube up. Stop it seizing. Grab that because I'm able to figure out this bit. I can't remember. Imagine I could. Could get this cable attached as well. Down here. There we go. Now all I've got to do is uh, tighten up my nut. Oh look. No, that's an eight and a ten. That's not what I need. There we go. Put the box ten, it can act as a stop. Um trouble just seeing how that bit is meant to go. I may, now that I think about it, I might actually have to use an original bit of the original bit that came out of it. I'm actually pretty certain it's got to go in that way and then round that, hasn't it? So... Can I just trip... Yeah, I can actually trip that bit off the end. That's going to make life a little bit easier. So that goes in there. Should go up in there. see that working. Is that, that goes through there. Like that. And then around there like that. So it goes around the pulley. Then to the cable clamp like that. Now I can't remember if I've got it right at the top there. I mean that really does look odd to me. I'm used to this going in the other way, but the way I sit, it ain't going to work. I just realised we have no cable adjustment on this either. in my nine mil. Is that the nine mil? There's my nine mil. Doesn't matter too much about the front gears because I have got cable adjuster on the top there for this. Still. Mm -hmm. That might be okay.
That seemed to look right to me. To actually uh, look this up and see how the cane goes on it. I should have took note before I uh, just pulled the cable off. Maybe we should go back through that video and see if I can see uh, how to do it. Cable and fray it. That's not what I want to do. It's got to go in and then through there like that. And that, that's the puppy like that. chasing the end of my bloody cable. that slide out of there. Okay, goes round that pulley under oh I haven't got direction. Okay, random siren outside. He can't fix the bike if you're playing with the bloody cable. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> Don't go too tight because I have a. Uh, Know myself to over tighten those. Oh, so that has defaulted back to there, then instead of being up there, right? As long as that's comfortable, and so long as it bloody work, I don't care. And it is moving the drain, yeah? Which is a good thing. I'm not going to know properly until I've got it upside down, but I'm not going to turn it upside down yet until I've done the brakes. Once I know everything is working, I can then trim the cables to length and put cable ends on and whatnot. Okay. Now, I don't think I'm going to have a rear brake cable long enough here. In fact, I know I haven't, so I'm going to have to reuse this one. I won't even have one at the workshop either. This 
this, uh, you know, this came off the bike, so it should go back on said bike. You stick this in your mouth so you can hold it. I'm going to sound funny for a little bit. adjuster going on. Get that screw all the way in. Get this threaded. Okay. Like so. Nice and smooth. Good, good, good. This put onto the frame. Yep. No, nope, I might actually have to leave the rear brake as well. It ain't long enough. That's a bit of a sausage, isn't it? I could cheat and go and buy one, but I don't want to, if I can avoid it. I don't think I'll be going for a test ride on this today. What I can do is I needed or wanted to replace the front one anyway, because it's a bit stiff inside all of that. Well, it's stiff inside the brake noodle. So I'm not going to reuse that brake noodle, I'll use, I'll use a, one of the other ones I've got here. Uh, yeah, I can reuse that one. If cable threads, so I'm just going to check it. I'll go through there nicely. So to that is nope. I can do that though. We'll try it again. If not, I have got another one, but it should. Oh, that's better now that I've got rid of that bit. That's what you want. Nice free movement. Right. Wrong clippers. There we go. Probably nothing wrong with that noodle, I think it's just a cable. Okay. Shouldn't have to cut this, this should be near enough to correct length, so just shove that down there. Well I did say I was gonna go as far as I could with this today. There we go. I don't really know if these do anything, or if they're just there for a bit of decoration, but I like to put them on. Because to me the brake doesn't look complete otherwise, but... Some people on this group say they don't do anything and they're not, you know, and they're not worth putting on the bike and whatnot. Yeah, I don't really see them doing much either. Just three in. Yeah, I think that would fall off. Should have just waited. Couldn't get hold of it. Right, we'll get this connected. Hopefully, uh, set up. In fairness, that out is a bit long. Um, that'll be fine now. Right, 
We'll get this bottled on. Just a hair too tight, literally just a hair. Loosen that off. Back off the hair. How's that? Nope, we need another hair off of that. One bolt. I don't know why I wasn't doing that bolt. Just adjust the uh yeah that spring on this side needs tightening up just a bit. Other than that, that's working great. So I'm gonna crank that down. Now I've got too many bits of cable flailing everywhere, so I'm gonna grab that. I should have a cable end laying over here somewhere. Should actually have four or five up here. You can get them in packs of ten for like I think they're about two pound fifty. If you go to Wilco's, very handy to have. Because frayed cables are a pain in the backside. Not to just reuse, but to. Uh, yourself on as well. They're not pleasant to catch yourself on. Right. Oh, I went up to middle gear fine. gear shifter this would um would actually go in the third gear I think but yeah it's not catching it's right a bit of double D forty might go on that but I'm pretty certain yeah if that was working properly the actual gear shifter that would go up another gear um yeah I'm happy with that and even if it didn't, it would only need the uh, cable adjuster up here, moving a little bit. So, I'm going to get smacked in the arm with a bloody thingy. I'm going to trim that cable. So I just need a pair of handlebar grips. A bit of WD-40. Have I got any up here? I have actually got some up here. Ooh. Give me that bit of a soaking like that. It's probably the uh, little pull thing that's got stuck. Right, what's I going to do? Oh yeah, I need to find another cable end, don't I? Like I said, I should have like three or four sitting up here somewhere. Yep, there's another one. I know I've got one in the tray of my toolbox. Can crimp these on with wire cutters like I am, just be careful you don't go to um, too far and cut through the damn thing. Like that, so those two done. Um, actually free wheels quite nicely. Yeah, so I need to check the rear gears now, don't I? I have no idea what that is in that frame. the other side now, aren't they? I'm going to flip the bike. That's not quite... That didn't quite come down to... 
bottom gear, but I don't know how I can adjust that because there's no adjuster. That's getting annoying, where's my cars? Could be that this hasn't been used for a while, so that's a bit on the sticky side as well. If it doesn't work, I've got other Drelia mechs in the workshop, I think. Tomorrow, as a just in case, I will bring another one out. Because in fairness, I've never got on with these uh, backwards Drelia mechs. It's the third one I've had. Right, it's just a chain on that front mech. Where is it catching? I can adjust that, that's not a problem. It's shifting better. I think it might have been just that it was a bit gummy. Yeah, certainly shifting better, but I'm not going to put a cable end on that just in case. I don't like that Meg. You see how wobbly that tyre is? That's the tyre, not the wheel. The wheel's perfectly fine. So, yeah, apart from rear brake and handlebar grips, this is good to go. And built from bits I had laying around. There's not one brand new part on this. It's in this tube, that's what it is, because something's sliding up and down. It's got some weight to it, but it's not the heaviest bike I've ever had. Might have to lower that seat, actually. <laughs> it's a wee bit on the high side. I just have to go for a ride and uh, I'm good. So it will actually uh, click one by one. I, mean, I can't even put a cable adjust adjuster in this bit, I don't think. So it really could do with one, really. But apparently, with these types of Duralium X, I was um, reading up on it all. Actually, I've got linked a YouTube video on these. Um, Shimano tried them a couple of times. They tried them in the late 1990s, and then again, I think it was the late part of the 2000s, early 2010, something like that, and they just didn't catch on. And to be fair, I'm not fond of them myself. <laughs> right. I've got to bloody remember what I need to bring back from Mums tomorrow. Hopefully a bike frame, if I can get that bottom bracket off, I'm going to get seriously medieval on it. Because it's quite a nice frame and I don't really want to scrap it if I can avoid it. But there we go guys, that's as far as I can get today. That other brake cable I got is just not going to be long enough. So I'm going to have to uh, see if I can dig one up. If not, I'm just going to have to break the rules and go and get a brand new one. I mean, in theory, I could break the rules and just get a couple of brand new handlebar grips. There's a couple of cheapies from Roy's across the road there, but I don't want to break those rules if I can help it. So I'll have a look over at Mum's. Oh, actually. I don't think about that, I might have a cable downstairs in the shed. And I've got a handlebar in there with cables and stuff still attached. So I'm going to actually check that out as well. Pretty certain I've got no other bike parts down there. A little 
weird though, that's just an old clunker of a bike. I'm not going to ask. <laughs> an old clunker of a bike and it works so well. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. If you liked the video, thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. And also, don't forget to subscribe, which button is somewhere down there, if you want to see more and whatnot. More videos like this and all the other random stuff I do. It's free to subscribe, so why not? Anyway, I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.